Women oftentimes throw in the towel with keto before they ever get a chance to work. The fact is, there's some loops that end up making it so that women don't see the progress quite as fast as men. But we're not talking a large amount of time. We're talking one to two weeks. But sometimes it's enough to make women just want to quit. And there's a lot of just negativity out there surrounding women in the keto diet, so a lot of them don't want to even start in the first place. They think that, well, the reproductive system is a lot more sensitive in a woman, so I don't want to just do this high-fat, low-carb diet in fear that I could damage that. Well, a lot of the science actually says the opposite. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through everything, and then I'm also going to give you some solutions because I don't want you to get discouraged just because men tend to lose fat in the first phase a little bit faster than women. Because I will tell you, women actually lose more overall because their bodies are set up for it. So we're gonna break it all down. Okay, I wanna make sure that you go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button down there, down in the corner. We got new videos coming out almost every single day these days, whether it's low carb, fasting, whatever. Also, make sure you hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. And after you watch this video, I want you to go ahead and check out Thrive Market down below in the description. If you're doing keto or if you're doing Whole30 or fasting or whatever you're doing, you might wanna check them out. They're an online grocery store and I've been able to partner up with them on a lot of my videos to be able to create specific grocery bundles. So that means I go through with my knowledge and I say, okay, this would be a good item to put in the box, this would be a good item to put in the box, and then we put that out for people that watch my videos so they can get their groceries in one spot online, delivered right to their doorstep without ever having to go to the actual grocery store, plus you're getting Tom's Delauer approved items. It's pretty cool, so check it out after we watch this video. Okay, so here I'm gonna jump right into it. We have to look at things from a different perspective from what we normally would do. Normally, we look at women and we say, okay, well, you uh, carry a child, your reproductive system is more sensitive, so we may not wanna reduce calories, or we may not wanna mess things up with keto. Well, we have to look at it from a different angle here. Okay, keto is all about running on fats. Women naturally have a higher fat percentage than men, okay? We're looking at 12% total mass versus 3% total mass in men. So what that would tell us is that well, actually, their bodies are more able to utilize fats, okay? They have more of it as an available fuel source, which means it's less dangerous for them to be running on fats. So that's the first thing that we have to look at. But then when we actually start looking at how the body uses these energy substrates, it gets really fun. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. This is where things get fun. They found that women utilize lipids a lot more efficiently than men meaning they go through what's called beta oxidation where their body's cells use fats much more efficiently and actually better than men, meaning they can burn fat for fuel better than men can. Now additionally, they also oxidize less protein, okay, and they also oxidize less in the way of carbohydrates. What that means is that they have less chance of breaking down muscle tissue than men and they don't use carbohydrates as well. They actually thrive on fats. Now, they dove into this a little bit deeper and they found that women had a higher intramyocellular triglyceride content. Okay, what that means is simply this. They have more fat droplets available inside a muscle. So inside the actual muscle cell area, which means that those fats are readily available for burning to be utilized. Whereas men, on the other hand, still have those, but not nearly as much as women. It just is a clear indicator, ah, women are designed to utilize these fats. And when we look at it from an evolutionary standpoint, it kind of makes sense. Women were probably going long distances, carrying children, whether on their back or in their arms. So they were designed for these slow burning, low burning, fat burning type maneuvers, right? Whereas men might have been doing more aggressive, quick bursts that normally wouldn't use fats as much, which kind of goes into the next thing. Women utilize adrenaline for the lipolytic action much better. Sounds complicated. What does that mean? Fat loss, is a result of adrenaline or epinephrine acting upon certain things and triggering what's called hormone sensitive lipase, a very fancy way of saying it's a catalyst. So when we get excited or we get amped up, like when we work out or when we're stressed because we're fasting, the body starts to ramp up adrenaline and epinephrine to burn fat. Well, the cool thing is, is that women are more sensitive to the adrenaline when it comes to the lipolytic action than men are. So what that means is if you took a man and a woman and you put them side by side, and you had the exact same amount of adrenaline go through the man as you did the woman, the woman would get more fat burning effect from the adrenaline than the man would. Which means that when you're fasting, when you're doing keto, anything like that, women are going to get more fat burning out of it than men. So the next thing we look at is what's called muscle mRNA. Okay, so women have a higher level of muscle mRNA that is associated with overall lipid utilization. What that simply means is again, 
at the muscular level, there is sort of a genetic activity that allows women to utilize fats more and actually has less potential damage. So there was a study that did something interesting. They did an intralipid infusion. And what that means is they had men and women both receive an influx of fats coming into their bloodstream. Now, believe it or not, fats can cause insulin resistance to some degree. They wanted to measure, well, who was more sensitive? Well, guess what? the men ended up developing some forms of insulin resistance at 60% versus the women at 45%. It's complicated gobbledygook, but what it basically means is that women had less instances of developing insulin resistance from high amounts of fat than men did. So men could end up more metabolically damaged, potentially, from a high-fat diet than women could. Again, it all makes sense. They have more fat, they use more fat, they can handle eating more fat. Now the next piece we have to go to, which is very specific for women, is going to be the estrogen piece. Everyone thinks estrogen is bad. Well, when you go through menopause, estrogen is decreasing and you don't exactly feel great, right? So we can't throw estrogen under the bus entirely. Estrogen actually helps us out a lot, especially for women. Estrogen makes you satiated. Estrogen helps muscle recovery. Estrogen recruits more muscle satellite cells so you can build more muscle and have a better metabolism. It's only when estrogen gets out of control that it's a problem, or when we don't metabolize the 1,7-hydroxyestradiols, like the bad estrogens that the liver can't handle. Okay, the right amount of estrogen is good. Now, there's a study that was published in the National Cancer Institute that's unrelated to keto, but it did find that when women reduced their fat intake, their estrogen levels decreased. Okay, we don't always want that. So a high-fat diet from keto can actually keep the estrogen levels where they're supposed to be and could potentially delay menopause a little bit, so it makes it so that you can, I don't know, be youthful a little bit longer. So it kind of leads us into the next piece, which is surrounding PCOS, which not every woman has polycystic ovarian syndrome, but when we look at PCOS, we get a big piece of how hyperinsulinemia and inflammation plays a big role with this. Basically what it means is that if you are someone that's having fertility issues, or if you're premenopausal, or you're having an early menopause issue, all these things can be related to hyperinsulinemia, high levels of insulin. Now, if you're on a ketogenic diet, obviously your insulin levels are going to be significantly lower. So that's why there are so many powerful links between keto and lowering the inflammation and lowering insulin that's going to ultimately reduce your risk of PCOS, but also increase your fertility and increase your likelihood of being able to have a family that you want to have. Now, when we look at menopause specifically, believe it or not, many of the issues that are a result of menopause aren't just because you're just getting older, okay? It's because estrogen levels are going down and progesterone levels are going up. Let me give you a comparison here. When you're looking at your typical menstrual cycle, okay? T -t typical 28 day period or however long it might be because it varies. The first half, your estrogen levels are high. You notice that you're satiated, you have more energy and you're recovering. Okay, then the second half, progesterone levels go up and estrogen levels go down. You're hungry, you're typically going to feel more irritable you're typically going to feel like you're tired and can't recover. Well, this kind of happens when you go through menopause too. Progesterone levels go up and estrogen levels drop. So again, keto could make it so the estrogen levels stay elevated, but more so it's gonna modulate the inflammation that's associated with elevated levels of progesterone, increasing brain-derived neurotrophic factor and decreasing nuclear factor kappa B in the NLRP3 inflammasome. So basically reducing brain inflammation so you feel better. So women are perfect candidates for the ketogenic diet with this. There is one very important thing that I need to mention in this video though, and that's surrounding the world of keto adaptation. When you first start a keto diet, there's a period of time where you have to get keto adapted. Okay? And when you get keto adapted, it's stressful on the body. Okay? And stress triggers cortisol. Okay? And cortisol can trigger a little bit of fat accumulation. Fat accumulation can trigger more estrogen. Estrogen triggers more cortisol. Cortisol triggers more fat accumulation, more estrogen. So essentially, in the very beginning stages of the ketogenic diet, women don't see as much immediate progress as men do. And that's where a lot of women throw in the towel. And that's where things just get completely thrown off. Because they think because when they first start and they're not getting the success the men are, that it's not for them. The reality is you just have this sort of estrogen cortisol loop that occurs in the first few weeks, but once your body gets keto adapted and used to utilizing fats, it's not as big of a problem. So what you have to do is you have to make sure you make a concerted effort in the beginning phases of keto to keep very calm and keep stress under control. And it will, I promise you, make it so that you can get to the golden period of the ketogenic diet a lot easier. So for all the naysayers out there, keto works great for women. It's not gonna harm your reproductive system. If anything, it's gonna enhance it. So as always, please keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.